Cool. Um, great to be along this afternoon. Um, always amazing to see so many incredible young people uh, interested in the future because it is your future. You're going to create it. Uh, you're going to be the people that see this enormous change, this huge wave of change that is coming to um, the world as we literally as we speak. Um, can we? Um, we can't really see that slide on that side, but over here. Um, so as a company, um, we're focused on the concept of humanizing computing. We live in a world where increasingly, uh, as people, as human beings, we're going to inter interface with artificial intelligence, with robots, with machines, with self-driving cars. Um, uh, we're going to spend more and more of every single waking hour of our day um, in interfacing with these machines. Uh, and it's going to be, and we believe, it's going to be incredibly important that these machines, if they're going to be useful to us, and they're going to help us in our day, li day lives, that they can be more human-like. So our mission um, and our vision is actually looking at how we put a face on all of these machines so that as we interact with them, they can help us in the way we go about doing that. And we do, do that um, not by being an avatar company, um, because these are the physical, if you like, or the digital representations of what we um, produce and what we deliver. So we're not an avatar, we don't call ourselves an avatar company. We don't even call ourselves a digital human company, um, because what's really, really important about the amazing work that we're doing is the technology that sits behind those faces and the way in which we are creating the world's first virtual nervous system inspired by artificial intelligent, intelligence, but as you'll see shortly, bringing to, bringing to life some incredible human machines. So I'm going to start off by getting us to think about the power of our face. Um, uh, my uh, business partner, Dr. Mark Sager, is a two-time Oscar winner. Um, he won Oscars. He did the amazing work on the, uh, um, on the movie Avatar with James Cameron. So those faces, those incredible blue creatures that made us fall in love with them were Mark's work. And he did the same with King Kong. So at this point, you're, you're starting to say, why couldn't we have Mark and why have we got Greg? <laughs> Um, well, that's the way it works today, at least. So how powerful is the human face? So this is one of Mark's favourite movies. He believes it's a really, really, really important movie. Um, <laughs> I haven't figured out why, but that's, um, I can blame him for, for selecting this picture. Um, so I'm going to make one change to this picture, and I want to see you, you know, study it really, really closely and see if you can work out what the change is. <laughs> Okay, pretty obvious really, wasn't it? Um, um, and what's really, really important about that, we've made one change to this scene and we have completely changed the context and the meaning that we take from it. Um, the relationship between the characters has changed. Um, our memory, you know, I've now destroyed your memory of that wonderful, perfect love scene um, because every time you see that picture again, you'll see Mr Bean pop up. Um, so it's, it's affected your memory, it's affected the way you feel about the, the scene, You've, it's affected the, the way you um, are emotionally connected to that machine. So we can see that the, the human face is the most powerful instrument that we have in terms of our way, uh, of the way in which we can express emotion, feel emotion, the way in which we engage with people. Um, it's actually part of our DNA. Um, you know, if we're in a room um, and there's somebody sitting in front of us, we have to look at them. If we don't want to look at them, we have to turn away. We have to actually physically leave the room. So that's how powerful the human face is to us as human beings. So, you know, wouldn't it be amazing, you know, wouldn't it be amazing if the machines we're going to interact with, the artificial intelligence systems that we already interact with, every day have a face? What would it mean if Siri had a face, if Alexa had a face, as we move forward into the future? Going to see an AI baby. What we're building here is a computer that can learn. She basically can see me and hear me. 
I'm gonna hide over here. She's looking for where I've gone. It's okay, sweetheart. No, no, it's okay. Now, Mark Sager's aim is to make man socialize with machines. Welcome to Soul Machines, the world of digital humans. The next employee you recruit could be digital. I'm Sophie. What's your name? We're partnering with Soul Machine which is an absolutely fantastic New Zealand company to create a digital human called Sophie, who's also powered by IBM Watson. Economy Sky Couch is a row of three economy seats that turn into a couch in the sky. And the whole purpose is really to investigate, to explore the role that digital humans can play in improving the customer experience. I'm having some trouble navigating all the different options. You mean options like Sport Package, Active Blind Spot Assist, Insulated Soft Cloth Top, Insulated soft cloth top? It's a great feature that allows you to have the top up during the cooler months and not feel the cold. Is that something you'd be interested in? Yes, definitely. There's so many credit cards out there, so many offers, options. I don't really know what to do. Oh, Shantanu, I completely understand. Would you like some help? Sure. Do you mind if I ask about your credit score? Welcome to my party. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for asking. Do you have a favorite song? Oh, that's easy. Strawberry Fields Forever. <laughs> the work with Soul Machines, um, Mark's work, truly transforms the way in which humans interact with systems. It's not my usual world and so it's a kind of quite exciting for me. I'm actually really excited about it and work so closely with them. We've got a glimpse of that future. It's a, a montage of some of our work and um, we recently announced Baby X5 which is the latest version of our research platform and she was the first image you saw with the, the digital image of the brain and the virtual central nervous system running down her spine. So the big change between Baby X3, who you saw cry briefly in that movie, and Baby X5 is she now has a full body. She has a virtual central nervous system that controls her arms and her limbs and her fingers and, and her toes. So um, as well as her face, she has a whole other range of ways in which she can express herself and communicate. Um, and our research team that are made up of neuroscientists and physiologists and psychologists can now start to explore a whole bunch of different ways about the way in which we as human beings learn um, to engage emotionally, how we learn to learn by being taught and watching and observing other people. Uh, you saw Baby X and her virtual neurotransmitters um, um, uh, kick in as she cried when she felt she'd been abandoned. So that's virtual cortisol, cortisol flooding into her, her brain and tr the models in her brain and triggering her, triggering her cortisol system. So these are just not amazing computer graphics. This is actually a, a digital uh, nervous system that sits behind it. Many of you will have seen or, or shows like Westworld. Um, uh, a very futurist, futuristic TV story which talks about, which has us engaging in and taking vacations with lifelike humanoids which enable to act out different experiences. Um, you could regard that as utopian or dystopian depending on your view of, of the future of the world, but in order to create you know, robots and humanoid um, beings that uh, you know, in many respects look like us, talk like us, walk like us, and behave like us, um, we're actually going to need a, neural, a, a, a nervous system with which to do that. So uh, you know, these are some of the different component parts of the, the, the sorts of things that are going to have to come together if we are ever to create Westworld. Um, uh, and some of the, the, the views that we see in, in the imagination of our movie makers and the science fiction movies that they, they create. We're also creating, at the moment, a whole bunch of the world's first you know, completely emotionally responsive digital humans. Um, you, know, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, I think seven people up there who are, in the, who are either digital humans or who have become digital humans. 
um, over the last uh, 12 months. So, I mean, these are the, the faces of our virtual nervous systems today. They're going to work for people like Air New Zealand, as you saw in that um, video um, just briefly there, uh, Daimler Benz, the big German luxury automotive car company. So, they're already finding roles and, and jobs in society to help us. Um, understand and experience the brands of different types of organizations. But if we roll this technology forward three to five years, um, the digital DNA that we're creating um, will enable you, um, not in eight weeks, which is how long it takes us to build a digital human today, but in probably less than 15 minutes, create a completely digital version of yourselves. So imagine being able to send the digital version of you off to a lecture. Um, or, to, or to a tutorial even, uh, maybe even to an exam. Um, who knows what the future will hold. But, um, you know, um, we will very, very quickly be part of a world where um, we will interact with these types of um, human machines on, on a daily basis. Imagine um, everybody talks about how wonderful self-driving cars are. Let's just stop for a minute. You're hurtling down the southern motorway at 120 kilometers an hour, um, and there are all sorts of people hurtling down the motorway beside you. How safe do you actually feel not having your hands on the steering wheel and, and a foot that controls the speed at which you're traveling about? How much trust are you as a person going to have to have in that machine, in the people that built that machine, in the brand that provided that machine or sold that machine to the service provider you use. You know, it is going to, in my view, I mean, it certainly scares the hell out of me, in my view, it's going to take a lot of trust. And one of the key elements of building that trust, we believe, you know, and some of the organizations that we're working with believe, is actually putting a face on that machine, giving it human-like qualities, giving it human-like um, views of the world. We've all seen the dystopian views of what robots um, could look like. The robots are coming, the robots are going to take over the world, they're going to take all our jobs, they're going to tell us what to do, we're going to become slaves. We've all heard those stories. Um, we have a really, really different view of the world. I travel around the world, we work with some of the best researchers on the planet, and uh, and what we find um, with the people that we, we work with, uh, they all want their artificial intelligence, their technologies that they're working on to be for the betterment of mankind, for the good of mankind. I've yet to meet a single person um, who wants to do something that's going to be awful. But we all know that will, you know, that can and will happen because in the digital worlds and the digital futures and the artificial intelligent futures we are creating, we as people, as human beings, are masters of our own destiny. And there are lots of really good people, um, like I'm sure all of us in this room are, but there are evil people in the world. We see that all too often. And so, you know, there is no doubt that some of these technologies will be misused and abused because that is representative of the, in many respects, some of the unfortunate human conditions. I have one of the most amazing jobs in the world. I have fun every single day. I get up in the morning, I pinch myself and say, should it be legal to have this much fun um, every day to fly around the world and talk to people about um, digital humans? And, you know, today there's less than probably a hundred digital humans deployed doing stuff in, in the world, um, and we face a future where uh, there will be hundreds of millions of them. Um, I like to think there'll be a little bit of Kiwi DNA in every single one of those, and we can you know, all take some pride by the fact that we're actually going to take over the world. Um, uh, you know, we're going to see you know, there are probably thousands of, only thousands of conversations with digital humans today. Um, and as time goes by, that will go into the billions and trillions. If, you know, if I think about it as an analogy, you know, the number of mobile phone conversations are every day in the world. Maybe we'll be having as many conversations with machines as we are with people, maybe even more. So, 
a, a big part of my job is using my imagination and creativity, thinking about all the different ways that you could use digital humans. We're already in the process of building a digital celebrity, so hundreds of millions of people can talk to their, their favourite sporting fan or their uh, biggest uh, Hollywood celebrity um, uh, any time they like and actually have a real conversation, well, a real digital conversation with them. Uh, we, could bring, we could bring somebody back to life. Um, you know, so maybe a president that inspired Americans like JFK. Uh, we can re-age people. So, you yeah, know, we all know that the, our queen, you know, the Queen of England's in her 90s. What about if we created a 30-year-old ver version of her all over again? Um, all of these things, you know, will be possible. All of these things are uh, possible in the exciting world that's in front of us. It enables us to do amazing things provide digital teachers to kids that don't have access to them, provide digital government service agents to the tens of millions of refugees that governments can't handle in different parts of the world. So next time somebody says to you that AI is not going to be good for us and AI is not, going, is not here to, and robots are not here to help us, um, stop and think about all the amazing things that we can do with this technology. Thank you very much.